Pat Kevin Show with Kevin McCullough. All right, we continue our countdown towards the election 2024. You know, it's just a few days away now, and I am so um, excited about the fact that we're at the end of this 4,298,817 day journey. That's, that's how long it seems like it's gone. It's only gone a couple of years, but it seems like it's been longer. But in the process of the uh, the you know the aftermath of 2020 uh kind of the lack of the red wave in most of the election of 22 there was a red wave it was at the school district level across the country we got a lot of school districts flipped in 22 but in the last four years there have been an increasing number of uh, women that have said we're not going to sit and be a victim to what happened in 2020 uh, again uh, and so what you've had is you've had uh, different groups pop up in different states, uh, starting state chapters, starting county chapters, starting local chapters of uh, these different groups that are then, you know, acclimating, uh, reaching out and activating uh, women to be involved. And one of the reasons why I've had so many women on this show at this microphone is because I feel like that their voice is really vital. And I feel like what is being said from Kamala Harris is not representative by and large, of the majority of women that I know and interact with on any given time. So uh, that's why tonight we had Riley Gaines. Tonight we're going to talk with uh, my next guest momentarily. But I just believe that the female vote is vital, and I think that there is uh, something to it that the press is missing, and we'll get into that. My next guest is Alexandra Bauer. She is one of those local chapter uh, heads of a group called Moms for Liberty, in the Bergen County region of the great state of New Jersey. And she joins me now. Alex, thank you for coming on That Kevin Show. Good to have you. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm I'm always curious when I run into people like you uh, that probably didn't always see yourself in some sort of political role, what was the motivation for you to say, we need a chapter of Moms for Liberty where, where I'm at? I definitely did not see myself in this role. Um, I am an aesthetician by nature, so I love to work with people, um, but you know, nutrition, skincare, things like that. And I, I do have three kids and my oldest one who will be 24. I, I honestly didn't notice too much um, in her school experience, uh, although she was kind of an easy child, straight A's, captain of cheer, you know, she didn't really um, show us anything that was going on. She kind of ran her own school career, if you would, she was an easy kid. And we didn't really hear too much from her. Maybe in around 11th grade during the presidential election, there was some comments. And I would say, well, where did you learn that from? And she was like, well, my teacher said that. But, you know, she was of the age where she could stand up for herself. So it wasn't too concerning. It was when our middle daughter um, during COVID was in kindergarten. And obviously this all of this stuff started to happen. And we would sort of get a glimpse into their day-to-day -day life with school. And I'm like, hold on a second. Why are you being taught that? And why did they say that? And why are they treating you that way? And we actually have a wonderful elementary school. But it definitely was shocking seeing the day-to-day -day, um, teachings and kind of opened our eyes up to, do they need to be in school seven hours a day? Um, who are these people teaching our, our children? Right. I don't even know anything about them. The school just said this is the teacher and I'm supposed to trust them. Um, and so that's when I said, OK, wait a minute. I need to sort of figure out what my rights are as a parent, um, what I'm allowed to ask. And I need to put my, my both my feet in the door. So that's what got me started with Moms for Liberty. Well, and since that time, you have uh, gotten very active. In fact, you've uh, traveled around your area supporting candidates in various races um, and I, I have been at a couple of them with you and I've, I've seen you bring your kids with, and I think that's great. I think we need to do more of that. My, my high school freshman this year, um, is following this election. Like it's a, you know, a Harry Potter novel. Like he's just, he's just like following it to the nth degree, uh, every day walking in, uh, from school saying, what happened today? What do I need to know today? I'm like, all right. Cool off a little bit. Like you've got some time to work this into your life, but we're, uh, but I'm glad that he's taking initiative. Um, being a mom and having kids that you love and growing them up in a world that's by most definitions pretty dangerous right now, um, you're being pitched hard 
by the Kamala Harris and the Donald Trump campaigns. They, they both have messaging that they're trying to get you, a suburban mom, to, uh, to vote in their favor because of. Um, as you have observed the messaging that they have put out, and I'm not trying to be partisan, I've given you no inclination on how to answer this question. What do you think the messages have been? And do you think that they are being effective, not just for you, but for other women that uh, you're interacting with? Um, and, and why or why not? Let's start with, what do you think the messages are that they are trying to get into your head as they're asking for your vote here down the stretch? Well, I'll start with uh, Kamala Harris. And basically the message that we're gathering from them is that women don't have a voice, women's rights don't matter, um, they should be trampled on by men that want to enter their sports arena or enter their locker rooms. Um, you know, the changes to Title IX, right, that just shows you right there that they don't respect these these girls and these women. Um, you know, they are just saying, like, well, you've worked your whole life for this, um, but now we're going to have this man who's clearly built differently than you, right? Um, you mentioned Riley Gaines before. I actually read her book, and she was on our Moms for Liberty book club. And she actually really went into how much work goes into, I, I want to say, I'm probably saying this wrong, but like shaving off less than a second, right? Yeah, how much tenths work of a goes second. Into yeah, it takes right. a and year to shave off that much A time. year. And how many different things that you may have to change and you may plateau and how much work goes into that and how all of a sudden this guy who really wasn't doing well on his own, the men's swimming team said, you know what? I'm going to identify as a woman now. And now because he's built differently, right? He's just going to jump in the water and, and just blow their times away. And so that's what they're teaching these young uh, little girls, young women and women. And that's the message that you're getting from that campaign. Okay. Um, the Trump campaign, um, you know, I think it's go out there. You can be whatever you want to be. We're going to protect you. We're not going to put up with this. Um, we're going to protect our girls because we respect them. Men and women are built differently and we need to really, um, you know, they both have such important roles and we can't be the same thing, right? We need balance, right? The, the men are good at certain things or they're built a certain way and the women the same way. And there needs to be that balance and harmony. And that's what makes, you know, each person so beautiful. And I think the fact that, they, you know, the Harris want to say it's toxic max masculinity, it's not toxic to want to protect the women in your life. It's not toxic to pr protect your daughter, your sister, your mother, your grandmother. So see, here's, the here's, the, here's the challenge yep. with that. And they even were, were talking about that late this week. Um, he used the word protect. He even went as far as to say, we're, we'll protect the ones who don't even want us to protect them. We'll make sure that they're protected too. Kamala Harris took offense at that and said that he's trying to rob agency of women. Now, when we're talking about the types of protections that he can offer as a president, you're talking about keeping murderers and rapists from invading our Southern border. You're talking about getting a handle on crime and not defunding the police the way she did.